saying I'm trying to stay away from temptation. You know, it's it's bigger than that. You know, I know that our every day we do have to fight this battle, and a lot of times we, you know, kind of focus on that more, and sometimes we forget the purpose of what we're doing in the kingdom. So what I want to talk about is, like I said, staying in the same vein, but because we're in discipleship teaching, we just want to kind of break it down so that we can have that understanding. We've been hearing these two words for a while, if you've been a part of this ministry, even also for a short time because we're talking about building. But I want to talk about as disciples today about assisting the kingdom. Can y'all say assisting the kingdom? Assisting the kingdom. Amen. Um, we talking like this because we want to make sure we kind of start adding to our, our resume, if you will. Our, our discipleship resume as a child of God. Who's with your boy? I'm walking only see half of their face. Is that Claude? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Good morning, Claude. Good morning. Um, we just want to kind of build in our resume because sometimes we don't, we just think we walk in this walk and then we have our church services and everything and then we don't understand that this is a true lifestyle. So we're talking today about assisting the kingdom. Assisting the kingdom meaning I have a purpose of why I am who I am in, in the Lord. Amen. And we hear these two words all the time and we're going to talk about it and it's being weapons and tools. We've been hearing about that, right? Being weapons and tools. Staying in the vein of understanding that we are building, that as people of God, when we don't understand our purpose, we do get lost in the, in the stuff we're fighting in the flesh. We do. You know, but when we, get, when we begin to focus on the mission, y'all say mission. 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 When we focus on the mission, which is assisting the kingdom. Minister G, you know, when we when we decided to um, turn away from the world, it's like you literally became employed. You know, we're talking about natural employment, we're looking for jobs, but you literally become employed in the kingdom. And our employment is assisting Holy Spirit in kingdom things in which we're doing. And the ways he uses us is by way of weapons and by way of tools. Amen? Minister G, can you tell me your interpretation of what you believe a weapon is? A weapon. A weapon is used to either attack or sometimes you can also use that same weapon to defend. Amen, amen. Glory to God. What you say about that, Sister Judea? A weapon. Um, kind of like what Gio said, I think a weapon is something that is designed to defend you, but harm your enemy. Yeah, amen. What you say about that, Brother Claude? What you think a weapon is in your interpretation? What, you, what do you believe? If I say, give me that weapon or use that weapon, what do you believe you, that weapon is for? It's something like, uh, just like God you said, something you can use to to defend yourself, like to strengthen yourself. Amen, amen. So, yeah, like a bullet. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't realize you were still talking. But you said, you said one more time, I'm sorry, let me get it into that. No, I say you're something stronger than yourself. For example, like a bulletproof. You can shoot like, yourself from a bullet, from a bullet by using that, like a bulletproof. Something stronger by you, than yourself. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, Mr. G, turn to 2 Samuel 22 and 35 for me. 2 Samuel 22 and 35, and Brother Mawamba, can you turn to Psalms 44 and 1? I'm just going to give us a little scripture for us to understand how in line this goes with us assisting the kingdom. 2 Samuel 22 and 35, Minister G, and Psalm 144 and 1, Brother Mawamba, real quickly. You got that, G? Yes, sir. Okay, can you read that real loud and clear for us? Yes, ma'am. He trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Y'all hear that? 
He teaches my hands to war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. That sounds like some type of weapon, right? That sounds like something he's doing. He said he teaches my hands to make war. So that, that goes in line with how we are to be assisting, assisting Holy Spirit in the kingdom as believers. Like we have, we have a job to do, amen? And through us doing what we're doing right now, we're gaining wisdom and knowledge to be able to know that this is the will of God. I mean, you've been hearing Pastor talk about this for a very long time. He's always said that we are weapons and tools. We are weapons and tools, but for what reason? For what reason? You know, we're not just in this thing just to be a title or have a title. Because if we are just in it for the title and going to church and saying this is what we do and trying to go through the rules and regulations, we get lost in the world and in, 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 in the things of the flesh. And we find ourselves focusing more on that than the mission, than the assignment. Anybody, y'all can, can y'all feel what I'm saying? When you find yourself be, being there at some times where you, you know, you're trying to walk this walk and it gets really, really hard and we're focusing on trying not to walk in temptation and all these different things that we're facing. We don't understand that we're actually missing our assignment, meaning we don't show up for work. We don't show up for work because we're busy running away from the battle. When we don't realize that he says, read it one more time for me, Minister G. He trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Amen. It sounds like he's preparing us. It sounds like he's prepping us for the battle. Not to run away from the battle or renege in the battle or feel like the battle is too hard. We have, we are weapons. We are weapons. I have, I have here for weapons, it's designed to inflict bodily harm or physical damage to fight, in other words. So it all went in line with what we're saying. It sounds like a weapon is there to like Minister G and everybody else said, to fight and also to defend, amen? But then, okay, I get that, but it's the word of God that tells us what we're fighting and what we're defending. Are y'all hearing me? Because as disciples, and I like to say discipleship because we're not just saved people. We are disciples. And disciples are employed in the kingdom of God. Employed to do what? This is what we're talking about right now. And it is the thing that's going to allow us to be able to stay on the wall while, like, pastors teaching us about building. Y'all hear that? Uh, Brother Obama, go ahead and read Psalm 44 and 1. Psalm 44 and 1. Psalm 44 and 1. One four Praise four. be to the Lord. Uh-huh. Praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for work. My fingers were battle. You hear that? Did y'all hear that? Glory Amen. Glory to God. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands to war and my fingers for battle. My hands to war and my fingers for battle. That sounds like something has to be in my hand. Like it's a weapon. Two scriptures we, we just read. In the kingdom of God, there's a lot of things that God has us doing in the kingdom. But we have to understand that the way we assist the kingdom as believers is understanding what he is telling us. What he, Minister G read that he teaches my hands to war so I can bend a bow of bronze. He teaches me how to do that. Okay? And we know that this is spiritual. This is not actually, you know, like all natural. Like, yeah, we're speaking of a natural illustration, but he's speaking about that brother Mawamba in the spirit. And just like you read, he trains. How does, how does the Lord my rock train me? 
What is how how does he train me? He has to teach me about these weapons and what that means, not weapons in the natural, but weapons in the spirit. And these are things that we need to understand so that we can focus on the fact that me as a child of God, as a disciple, my assignment and my employment is assisting the kingdom of God. And a part of that is fighting. Fighting, I fight so I can protect something, right? I defend so I can protect something. Is that right, Mr. G? Amen. 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 All right. And one more, y'all. Can somebody tell me what you believe a tool is? Brother Mawamba, what you believe is a tool? A tool. We just talked about a weapon. A tool. I, be I believe a tool is something, is like an instrument or something used for a purpose, or for someone or something. Okay, what you think, Sister Judea? A tool. Uh, a tool is anything that you can manipulate or use for a certain purpose. Okay, I see your hand raised, Mr. G. What is a tool to you, man? Uh, a tool is used to build and it's also used to fix something. Yes, yeah. Brother T, what you say, man? You was raising your hand? What is a tool? Well, I believe a tool is, uh, is something that you can actually use. It's almost can be used as a weapon, but a tool also can use it to build something. Okay, build yeah. Something. That's right. What you say, Brother Elijah? There you go. He said, you used to complete an assignment. Everything y'all said is correct. You know, and it's so funny because a tool, and I put here a tool, an instrument used to repair. That you're about to say, okay. To fine tune. To fine tune. Y'all hear that? To repair, to fine tune, to finish something. Amen. All the things that y'all said is, is, is so right. So I want y'all to think about that in your spiritual mind right now. In your spiritual mind as a disciple. God using you to repair something. Repair what? You understand? The whole Holy Spirit will come and use you as a tool. So think about this. Me. My body. Me the vessel. I'm standing here right now. And I'm being used as a weapon and a tool. Is that correct? I'm being used as a weapon because the words that the Lord is using me to teach, or like Minister G, taught Bible study, Sister Judea taught discipleship, Brother Terrence, pastor preachers, um, all those different things are designed, we're used as vessels to repair something. Someone may have a broken heart, right? And I'm talking about us being disciples, understand that every last one of us have a work. That's why we call on y'all to do prayer. You know, when you begin to be built up and get stronger and stronger, your mindset as a disciple is, it's time for me to go to work. Assisting the kingdom. If it's through prayer, if it's through serving in the ministry, Whatever that issue may be. Brother Mulamba, if you pray, man of God, you may be used by God to help somebody out of a situation through your prayers. You're being used as a tool. Oh, yeah. Amen? To heal somebody's broken heart. You know, Sister Judea, we were all, we, we, and, I, and I just thought about you because I was thinking about, and even uh, lately, like when we as women, you know, we want to fix our toenails and our fingernails, we get tools to repair. Hallelujah. If we have a toenail that broke or a fingernail that broke, we use clippers to repair. After we're done using the tools, right, Sister J Jamie, our toenail 
or whatever goes from whatever it was that wasn't looking right to how we wanted it, right? It was used to repair, right? Right, Mimi? Y'all understand where I'm going? So we are to understand, y'all, this walk is hard sometimes. It gets very challenging sometimes. It hurts a lot sometimes. But we are still employed by the kingdom. The moment we get away from that, then we focus more on the struggle, more on the temptations, more on the things that cause us to, you know, it's funny how the, it seems like when we focus more on the temptation, you fall into it. When we focus more on it, we end up falling into it. Rather than taking those situations and focusing on how to repair that situation. Like if I'm in bondage or if someone else is in bondage, the word of God is a weapon. It's also a tool. Right? So this is, this is one of the greatest instruments in your toolbox. Amen? The word of God. As a disciple, this is your greatest weapon, and this is your greatest tool, because the Word of God cuts and heals at the same time. The Word of God cuts us, right? Sometimes we hear a word and you're like, ooh, but then it's also healing at the same time, so it's a weapon and a tool. So if I'm using the Word of God, Brother Claw, as a weapon and tool, in the life of somebody that I'm close to, then I'm using the greatest weapon. If that person resists the word of God, then you begin to understand, wait a minute, what's going on here? You, you literally will begin to learn and understand what's going on in that moment. Because you understand that you're a vessel of the tool. So I'm going to cut it right now, and for these last 10 minutes, I want y'all to talk back to me. I want y'all to talk back to me. I want y'all to tell me um, what you're picking up, what you're hearing, what you want to add to what we're talking about. What do you feel? Do you feel this is truth? Do you feel like this is something that is needed to be taught? Come on, y'all talk to me for this last 10 minutes. Lord God. Hallelujah. What you say, Brother Barama? Um, When you say the more we focus on the struggles and the temptation, that's the more we fall alive. Yeah. And I feel like I do. I believe that's true because same way like if you get a cut, the more you focus on it is the more you're going to feel the pain and everything. But if you go on by your business, like you're not going to feel no pain or anything. The pain is, I mean, the cut is still going to be there, but you're not going to feel the pain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's true. That's so true because sometimes you can be thinking about pain. I know, and I'm just speaking for myself, okay? I'm just talking for myself. A lot of times, you know, if I think of something, oh, something hurts on my side, brother Alana, my side start hurting. If I start focusing on that, all of a sudden the pain starts getting greater. You know, and it could be a lot of things are just so mental. We can ponder and focus on something so much. We can literally fall for the very thing we're focusing on. Is that right? So while we're busy saying, oh, don't fall for sin, don't get in that room, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, we're supposed to Resist and get yourself out of, you know, bad situations. Y'all understand what I'm saying. You know, don't be in a room by yourself with a woman. All that. I get all that. You know, but when we focus on that so much, we begin to fall in the very thing we try to run away from as people of God because we're not utilizing the weapons and the tools. I'm assisting. I'm, I'm assisting the kingdom. Like, like, okay, when I got saved, why didn't God just kill me and take me to heaven? Like, why am I here? Do y'all ever think about that? Amen. Amen. Yeah, you know, like, like okay, now that I'm saved, like, okay, because this world is a mess. You know, every day you got to choose not to, right? Like, why am I here? What am, what am I here for? You know, so when we begin to focus on the fact that we are here, we literally get a job when we give our lives to Christ. And he's, we get employed by the kingdom. We have 
have a purpose and a function, and it is to build. But you cannot build without weapons or tools. Is that right, Pastor? Yes. I cannot build anything without a weapon and a tool. Will I want to come off the wall sometime? Certainly. Will I get tired sometime? Yes. Do you want to crawl in a, in a corner and cry? Come see me. I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. It gets hard. But we have an assignment. If we focus on the assignment, it's going to keep you off the clubs, y'all. It's going to keep you out of the, the situations that you get yourself into. It's going to make you strong enough to stand against challenges. It will. Are y'all hearing me? Anybody else? Anybody else? Just say, Brother T, come on, come on. Um, yeah, and as I was mom was um, teaching, um, when she uh, when she had said that uh, in the book of Psalms, I think I wrote it down. Psalms 144. Blessed be the Lord, my strength was teaching my hands to war and my fingers to fight. The book of uh, well, Jeremiah came back in my mind. I actually read it earlier in the morning. Um, Jeremiah 1 and 10. He says, See, I have this day set thee over to the nation, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. So when, when she was talking about a weapon, a weapon, a weapon can all, uh, you said a weapon is something that we fight with. Oh, man, I, I think I wrote it in my own definition. So I, it's something that we fight with due to uh to self-defense. And Jesus saying, but over here it says, when I read this, because the, uh, the title is Assist, Assisting the Kingdom, so it's like when he says to uh, root out to pull down, and Jesus saying, it's like uh I, if I'm not mistaken, it's almost like a like a, a weapon that's that's being used. That's that's being used, and it says to destroy and to throw down. That's like a a tool because a tool can either build or deconstruct. If that's the right word, uh, you know things in Jesus' name. So yeah. I feel like this is like a, it's like a, a natural, it's like a natural uh, scripture, but also it's being said in the, in, the, in, the, in the spirit, you know, so I really believe that this, this, this Jeremiah was also, also was being used as a weapon and a tool, you know, according to the word, what the word of God said in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. That's a real good scripture as well. I didn't think about that one. Anybody else? Anybody else? What, what, what's real powerful to me also is what's real powerful to me is uh, last week I got a chance to hook up with a brother of mine that has a lot of um, wildlife weapons. And he had different types of bows and arrows, and me and my son got a chance to go. And the second bow that he had, it had the string, Minister G, was all around the different little places on it. It was kind of big. And he came out and told us, he said, not too many people can do this. And he said, because I got a, uh, somebody who he said was 280 pounds and couldn't even pull the bow back. Couldn't pull it back. And I was intimidated when I heard that, you know, because I ain't nothing but 170 pounds, you know, so I was like, man, I'm not even going to mess with that. But then he looked at Josiah, my son, and he said, man, you want to feel it? And Josiah grabbed the bow and pulled the bow all the way back. And the dude was like, how did you do that? And, and I was like, oh, my God. And so when that happened, y'all, 
it made me wonder, wait a minute, I wonder if I could pull it back also. When I grabbed it, I, so, so I need y'all to understand, when the scripture says, he trains my hands to war, and my fingers to fight, he says, so that you will be able to pull a bow of bronze, like some, every weapon everybody has skill to use. Some people are not even strong enough to use it. But when I put my hand on it, not only that, y'all, the one that was the most difficult, I had the most success using it for the first time. I don't know why it felt like it was easy. I need y'all to understand that there's certain tools and certain weapons that God will put in our hands, you'll be assuming, oh man, I probably won't be able to pray. Oh man, I probably won't be able to do that. And you find yourself getting in it, getting victory. And somebody may look at you and say, how did you read a full chapter on your first time reading? How did you do that? Because there's certain people that God says that it's like we're born out of due time. So that means there's certain weapons that's been made ready for us and we already prepared. A lot of times we just don't know that we've been prepared. We got to be put in a situation where the challenge is there and when you present it with the weapon, it fits. Everybody say the weapon fits. The weapon fits. Something the weapon about the being able to use that weapon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. You have something to say, Minister G? You want to add to that? Oh, um, I, I, I do agree with what Terrence was saying uh, with the Jeremiah. That's the scripture that I was thinking about is what Jeremiah 1 and 10. Um, and he said something really good about a tool because it is also used to build, but it's also used to destroy. Like, yeah. I work in architecture. And, and, and construction and that same tool that you use to put something together we can also use that same tool to tear it back down like you use a hammer to, to um, nail put nails into the wall to build it up you yeah. can use that same hammer to remove those nails or destroy the wall yeah. 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 so you know we can be used you know, in God's hand as weapons and tools to build and um, repair and fix and destroy. But, you know, you can also be used by the enemy thinking that you're a tool, but really you're coming to destroy. Wow. Yeah. Y'all, did y'all hear that? So think about this as we're closing, as we're closing. Think about everything that everybody said, y'all. You know. Focus, if we can focus on the fact that we actually are warriors. In so many words, we need to be warriors in order to build in the kingdom of God. Does that make sense, y'all? Thank you, my sure. Amen. The, the Bible says stuff like this. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. That sounds militant to me. Yeah. That sounds like a military type of scene to me. He says that he is our fortress. Amen. Yeah. In Psalm 91, the Bible says that he's our fortress. Yeah. Amen. Y'all do know that a fortress is an impenetrable building. You can't penetrate it. Not easily. It's not easily penetrated. So that's militant as well. He make it, teaches my hand, like my, my, my version, and I think it says, King James Version says, he make it my hands to war and my fingers to fight. That sounds militant to me. He tells me that he teaches my hands to war and that my, so that I can pull back an arrow of bronze, a bow of bronze. Amen. Arrow, bow, yeah, that's not the same thing. No. Okay. <laughs> anyway, y'all get the picture. It does the same little motion, right? <laughs> that sounds militant to me. He said he'd make it my hands to war and my fingers to do battle. That sounds militant to me. So we are warriors. 
We have to be y'all. God is teaching us to be. And that is, that's the only way we're going to be able to stand against the kingdom of what? Who we, who we coming against? The kingdom of what? Darkness. Kingdom of darkness. Y'all, the kingdom of darkness is replicating the same thing, but for evil. Yeah. Okay? Just like Minister G said, they come to destroy. You need weapons and tools for that. They're coming to destroy what? Your fortress. Your, your protection. That is the reason why many people walk away from God because they do not understand what and the purpose of why we're here. We think it's a religious thing because the world is coming to tear that foolishness down anyway. They come to tell you, we don't have nothing to stand against it, right? But when we have the weapons and the tools in, in the kingdom and the arsenal, then yeah, you, you can come against the kingdom of darkness. Because you, you understand the weapons that you're using. Glory to God. But when you don't use the proper weapons, Brother Samuel, when you don't use the proper weapons, you're going to allow yourself to allow the world to convince you that the kingdom of God is not stronger than the kingdom of darkness. And it's going to tell you, okay, this is okay. Nothing's wrong with that. This is this. This is that. Amen? Praise but the Lord. we have to be able to use the proper weapons or we will lose every time. My Lord. We will lose every time. My Lord. And that's when we lose soldiers to go back into the world. Amen? Glory to God. So, y'all, come on. Let's, let's, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yes.